All right, gather round, folks, gather round. Today, we're going to be diving into the wild micro world of bacteria. And I'm going to be your guide into one serious infection. My name is Gab, I'm a scientist studying bacteria, and my research topic focuses on a particular bacteria called E. coli. But we're not going to be talking about that bad boy today, no. We're going to be talking about another bacteria, one that causes a seriously interesting infection. So imagine this, you're a sexually active person who enjoys going out and meeting people. Things go well and you hit it off with someone and you decide to take them back to your bedroom. Your little Casanova you. And that's fantastic, but you might have been doing a couple silly things. Like I said, you might have been a Casanova and you might have been hooking up with a bunch of people beforehand. Also, you may or may not have wrapped things up. So two to 14 days afterwards, you start noticing some symptoms. Things coming out of places that really shouldn't be coming out. You might get unwanted discharge, redness, itching, discomfort, general pain. There might be irritation in other areas as well, like your eyes, your throat, and your bum. So you do the right thing and you get a test kit and you test it at home. And a week later, you have the results. Ding, ding, ding. You've just won the clap. You no longer have a child on the way, but you do have an STD. <laughs> STD. Now the clap is an interesting name for this STI and we actually don't know where it originates from. Theory number one, it comes from the clapping sensation when you urinate when you're infected. Theory number two, there was an ancient clapping therapy where you would basically hit yourself to try and solve the issue. Theory number three, and I think this one is the most convincing to me, there were French brothels called Le Clapiers, which were hotbeds for STIs. Le Clapiers, the clap. Whatever you call it, the clap, the drip, gonorrhea, that is the disease. But the actual bacteria causing it is Neisseria gonorrhea. And that bad boy has been plaguing humanity since before the Old Testament. And it's even been documented by Hippocrates himself, saying that it came from the pleasures of Venus. Who knew STIs could be so romantic? The bacteria is a diplococcus, which means that it looks like two beans stuck together. They're also gram-negative, meaning they have a thin cell wall. And they're also non-motile, so they're not moving around a lot. With they do have these hair-like structures called pili, which allow them to stick to certain mucosal surfaces and also exchange DNA in certain different situations. Now, a lot of my research focuses on whole genome sequencing, how we can investigate the DNA inside bacteria to find out some really interesting things about them. We can use that genomic information alongside really interesting epidemiological data to try and look at the spread and distribution of the disease. Now, if we take a range of different Neisseria gonorrhea from a range of different samples from a range of different people, sequence their DNA and look into that, we could actually see that not every single strain of Neisseria gonorrhea is exactly the same. Neisseria gonorrhea as a species have conserved genes. These are genes that are found in every single strain of the bacteria. But they also have these things called accessory genes. These are genes that are found in some strains but not found in others. And as a species, it's got this thing called a flexible pan genome. Basically, if we get a collection of Neisseria gonorrhea and we sequence their DNA and then we continue to add more strains of Neisseria gonorrhea, we might find new genes popping up here and there. And this is really interesting. Because of the accessory genes, it can adapt to a range of different environments. We can also use their genomic information to look at the spread and distribution of certain types of Neisseria gonorrhea. And a really cool example of this was a study done in Norway. In this study, they observed multiple circulating types of Neisseria gonorrhea in different populations. Different types of Neisseria gonorrhea were found to be circulating in men who have sex with men in the Greater Oslo area when compared to heterosexuals outside of that Greater Oslo area. Another selection pressure for adaptation might be antibiotic use, which is a serious problem. There have been many historical treatments for gonorrhea. One example was the clapping method. There were some methods where they would flush out areas using 50 degree water. There are stories of a surgeon in the 1700s called John Hunter, who supposedly infected himself with syphilis and gonorrhea. And he was the one who championed the use of mercury to treat this. Thankfully, we don't use heavy metals to treat this now. We use antibiotics. The typical treatment for this is keftriaxone, which is a third generation cephalosporin. But unfortunately now, the issue is antibiotic resistant Neisseria gonorrhea. 
Antibiotic resistance is a major global health issue, highlighted by the World Health Organization as one of the biggest global public health threats. Imagine getting infected with gonorrhea and finding out that no known antibiotic can treat it. Long-term untreated infections with gonorrhea can lead to things like infertility, ectopic pregnancies, it can lead to things like pelvic inflammatory disease, and it can even cause inflammation of coiled tubes behind the testes. But it's not all doom and gloom, there is amazing research out there trying to alleviate this problem. One way we can do this is through antimicrobial stewardship. This is a systematic approach to monitor and appropriately use antimicrobials. Another way we can alleviate this problem is through vaccine development, but again there's really important important work being done by lab groups looking at vaccine development but also education and outreach. Now there seems to be this stigma and this judgement when we talk about infectious diseases like this. But thing is we shouldn't be afraid to talk about these things. I think we should remove the stigma and it should be discussed more openly. And remember science should be fun and accessible to everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed studying Neisseria gonorrhea. If you guys have any other suggestions for the next bacteria I should talk about, drop a little comment down below. I hope you guys enjoy. Alright? Peace out.